it's really cool to watch the evolution of a script and why like at the beginning you go oh this is pretty good yeah this is this and then you read the one at the end and you're like wow night and day like well stuff like the theme you know that's huge i don't know what that theme has been you know for a while and it's like i've lost touch with it so like that's really huge to like dial that back in and i think he's creating a whole new breed of hu humans in here <laughs> thanks greg <laughs> good, yeah. <laughs> ever wondered how to make your story stand out in a sea of stories what if i told you there's a simple psychology to profound storytelling I not only teach you the craft of writing, I teach you how to create profound stories and make your writer dreams a reality. So the story's about a loser dude who gets squirted by a horny alien mold that turns the dude into a sexy lover so he can spread the mold's killer baby seed. That's kind of what happens in this story. Would you agree? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> Do you think that this is a horror genre? Like, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, for sure, yeah. Okay, yeah. good, good. I'm glad because I agree it is definitely a horror genre. And um, there's a lot of really good stuff in here. I think you have a, a lot to work with. And I say go as big as you want with it and have as much fun with it. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. You can always pull back. So we agree that it's horror. The two things that I think that are really missing right now are that character development. Like, so we feel, so we root for the guy, but at the same time, don't root for him. You know, it's a horror film. So his arc goes from this loser guy who I feel is lacks confidence to somebody who's really, who's far more confident, but that confidence has created this monster, so to speak, right? That's why it's a horror film because of, you know, blood. And then he, he becomes a monster, so to speak. So I need to ask you a few things. One, how do you see this mold? Is this mold an alien? Uh, oh, uh, no. You know, I actually saw it as like, um, I, I like tactile mold, like a, like a growth, kind of like a moss, you know? So how uh, does it have this effect on him? Oh, oh, how do I see it? I, I see what you're saying. Um, yeah, not visually. I mean, what's the, the role of the mold? It becomes this, it inhabits him. It kind of, so to me, that's why it also feels like a horror film because I feel like the mold yeah. is the true antagonist in the film that is taking over. And it doesn't, yeah. have to, the audience doesn't have to know for sure, but you have to know in writing. Yeah. Well, you know, it, it's interesting. Like for me, I think I always saw like essentially that it, like Greg's character, it is him the whole time. And this mold essentially like unlocks something in him. It's like a catalyst um, or like a representation of that change, you know? Um, but that's what needs like, that's that. those are the things in this that are, there's a lot of that, that I love the idea of having something a little more solid for people mm -hmm. to hold on to. Um, it's yeah, weird. I, I never saw it as kind of like reality. No, if right. that makes any sense, right? Like the same in the same vein as Little Shop of Horrors, like, you know, there'd be mold growing in there. Nobody's really questioning it. It just gets bigger and bigger. Um, but but almost okay. meant to be, yeah, like a like yeah. not bought as as real. Does that make sense to you, Don? Well, when I say that? Sort that of like a but here's out? the thing. You have like the you end up having this. The gal has um, a baby and this baby bites and does. Now, is the baby real? Is it demented? Because the mold is obviously mm -hmm. something. If this woman, is the baby instant? Because it's not nine months, right? It's the baby's form gestated and delivered. And then what does that baby look like? And why does it bite? Is it a mold monster baby? What's the deal? It is like the, the only interaction we have with it in the film is essentially she like gives birth to this thing and it slithers away and hides in the bathroom. She regains consciousness, goes to look for it, you know, under the, under the toilet and essentially comes up with it attached to her face. That's why I think the mold's this alien creature because it's 
it's procreated an alien and it's using, it, it feels like it's using, um, is it Greg? Yeah, Greg as the host, but it's also, uh, it's, it's messing with him, right? Because it has to in order to, for the mold to achieve its purpose. So yeah. that's why I kind of felt I was leaning that direction. The inciting incident when, when Greg is sprayed or squirted with this mold, um, he, he realizes he needs to, he starts to go through this, this shift. And in here, there's not a big shift. It's like sudden. Okay. And so we have to think like the story is about releasing information, withholding information and all for the audience's you know, all for the sake of the audience's journey. So withholding information, releasing information, action, reaction, right? So those are kind of the four components that you have to play with in order to build suspense and intrigue and interest, because we have to keep the audience's attention from the beginning and keep them invested. And the, the two ways that we do that, one, Greg, and then Greg's journey. So keeping Greg as an interesting character, that means giving him the wants, right? The need, and then having him experience these things and then um, showing the progress of him as he journeys on this. So the actions. So we've got his emotional journey, right? And the active journey. And so those are the two things that we need to be really aware of. And, um, and so, I don't know if you can see this, but I, you know, I also wrote a whole bunch back here, but I, I like, it. you know, You're awesome, here, young. Oh, that's you so know, weird. and then I was doing more on this page and um, I don't want to overwhelm you because somebody could look at this and go, what? Oh my gosh, how am I supposed to deal with all of this? I want us to plot out really where Greg's going and, and create those moments and those beats. And I think that you'll begin to understand what I'm talking about when I say it's about action and reaction. So a lot of these moments, you just move, you, you, you pile through, you, you speed through without giving the characters time to digest it and giving the audience time to digest it and build up momentum. You know, it's not a sprint. This is a marathon. It's a 10 page marathon. And we have to be very careful about when and, and how quickly we let these characters change. So um, I'll give you, well, let's just start from the beginning and I'm gonna share my screen because I took your, um, I took mold, your script into Yumi script. Can you see it? Yes. Okay. Okay, so one, when you, you're going to take it and work the formatting out properly. So you've got, you know, you wouldn't do scene one. Um, you would do um, it's interior or exterior. And right now this is exterior because it's in front of the apartments, right? Mm -hmm. um, and we could say scene heading right there. Exterior, front of apartments. And it will give you automatically day. Okay, so we've got that, right? So this is how all of our slug lines need to look while you're, you know, for, for this. And then I'm gonna do some basic editing word-wise because I want you to go through this and you're going to do that again. But think about getting rid of as many INGs, Greg, because it keeps it more current. Think current tense stands in his doorway. And short and sweet. And I'm just gonna say, Lisa put together approaches, a moving box in hand, something like that. We like it short and sweet because here's why, when you're, when somebody's reading this, I'm at the point right here where we've got too much going on in this sentence even. I would space it out because my eye needs to look over this quickly and I, I, I don't, you don't want me having to process so much information that I get stuck on having to think about it all. You only put what's absolutely necessary. A moving box in hand, she's moving in. That's all I need to know about Lisa, right? <laughs> Except she's put together. Okay, cool. She's the opposite of him. All right. Uh, she realizes who Greg is. I'm going to say, 
No. Um, I would say there's it's something else. I don't know what that is. Um, okay. So now let's talk about, I liked this first page, even though I wrote a lot on what you have, a lot of what you have going on. Um, I thought that it was a fun introduction. I'll give you my opinion. I think that your first scene in this needs to be Greg discovering the mold in his shower. I think that's the first scene. And I think the first shot is the mold. I think we open on the mold because that's the focus of the story. And um, I also think that it's, we're looking at the mold and then we're looking at Greg and he just notices He's like, and he leans in, he leans, can you see me too? Or is it just, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So he's leaning in and he's like, and it's little, it's a little spot first. And I think that mold grows and the mold, it's going to be able to grow throughout as it takes more and more control of him. And it represents that arc in him as well. Right. It's the visual of what's going on in Greg. And, and I would say that he, he even like puts his finger up to touch it. And it kind of like, it either it moves or it just squirts a little bit or it does something, maybe a little prong pokes out. I don't know. It does something. And he's like, oh, whoa, you know what I mean? And so I say we, that's how this opens, because that's that's the story right there. Now, um, now, now we're into this scene. OK, maybe even it pricked his finger a little bit. And, you know, it it's the beginning. Oh. I like that. Um, the idea that it would like react to him in some way. So you can, you start to see that connection right up. Now, front. you know, there's, yeah. Oh, dang. Okay. And then I would edit this. I'm going to scan what I wrote too and send it to you at some point. Um, but we'll go over it here. So I like that Greg's going, I'm just going to tell you right now, because I don't want, I want, I don't want you to be disappointed in me as far as then everything goes, I'm going through something, something existential. Um, I almost feel like we can cut a lot of it down. Um, right now in Yumi script, I think we've got 11 pages. So there's going to be a lot of room here to edit down. I think the leaner you can go, the less your characters really have to say, the better. But um, I like that he's just right off the bat. Um, I'm not quite sure that, <laughs> that what he's thinking, like why it's funny. But why does he say that to her? If he's feeling, if he's not confident, why would he say that? Is he self-conscious maybe in that moment? You know, that's a great, that's a great point is the idea that him even like saying that is being very vulnerable and like- Kind of confident in a way? You wouldn't, you wouldn't think he would really- um, Worry? do that so my feeling it's, it's a little yeah it's it's yeah it's it's interesting because so my feeling is that he he would that instead of lisa introducing herself she's carrying this and she's like hey you must be greg this is this is your dad's building right he doesn't say anything maybe he just nods and she kind of looks him up and down and it's like and maybe she's not being rude but she's just like uh and he's and he feels he has that moment where he shrinks and he's like yeah, well, I'm kind of going through something existential right now, okay? Like, you know, geez, back off. I'm just going through something existential. Um, and I might, I think we might be able to get away with something that, like, just, and maybe he even says it under his breath because it's more to himself, you know? God, I'm just going through something existential. But I do like that she says that's a big share because it's hilarious. I just don't know if she would like, get into all of this. I think it's too much in her response. You know, um, if anything, I think that Greg uh, would probably knows who she is and maybe he, his dad, so maybe dad has already told him about her and he's like kind of out there waiting to see her and like, because he wants to be more confident. And so this is the time where we get to see him like, doing you know tr trying to be like hi hi she's like you must be greg right this is your dad's building yeah he's like yeah and he was like too afraid to talk even and she's like okay 
and she keeps moving and he says um so uh i heard that you were that you're just getting divorced you know or that you um that you left her husband like oh that's way too much personal information right but now we know about her and he just kind of is this awkwardly shared information that he shouldn't. Um, and she'd be like, um, cause I think the whole child stuff at the beginning is too much information on children. It like, it points us in that direction, make it subtle and make it like cut around all that. Um, yeah, I, so uh, you're getting divorced, huh? I heard you're married. Because I think dad shared information with him about Lisa that he shouldn't have. And that's where she's going, whoa, um, okay. Uh, yeah, well, yeah. And, and and he might even add, yeah, I mean, because you, you wanted kids and he didn't, right? And she's like, oh my gosh, none of your business, you know, or something. And he's like, yeah, I don't think I could afford them either whatever, you know, you could keep some of that comedy. It's like, he is awkward and doesn't know how to, how to do this. So anyway, okay, well, I know what I want and I'm excited about, so, well, yes, I'm excited about moving forward. Um, and then she talks about pregnancy again. So that's where I'm thinking it's maybe just a little bit too much, but I get that you're trying to do, uh, I don't think the age thing is, should even be a concern here. You know what I mean? Uh, And Lisa says, well, I know what I want and I'm excited about moving forward with my life. And then she waits there awkwardly waiting for a response and, and he doesn't give one. It's really an awkward first kind of meet, right? Okay. So um, I don't know why is she asking him about these dating apps? Like when she looks at him, why would she think that he would know anything about dating? And certainly if he's not hot, she's not gonna try and meet him on a dating app, right? Yeah. Yeah. It, it, at least in the, it really makes sense that she would know all about that. Like she'd have that information if she's, even if she's been married, if she's a put together person, like mm -hmm. she'd have an awareness, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. Right. So I'm not sure that you even need any of that. I would reevaluate that. Yeah. Um, and Lisa climbs upstairs. So now what you've, you've got like these things that say mold growth stage one, do you plan to superimpose that over the screen? Uh, no, I no, no. That that actually is just a note for like okay. the, the production. Essentially, is it's like the size. Okay, okay. So, like so you don't need that. You won't need that in the script. Okay. If, however, you wanted to be able to show the spacing and the time you could superimpose something like that at the beginning and it could be interesting if you did like the first day he sees it and it could be mold growth stage one you know in your on your monitor superimposed okay so by okay. the time she gives birth it's mold growth stage four uh, or day four you know you could give that kind of thing to superimpose to keep us on in line with your time it's a, it's an option because it's kind of interesting. Okay. Then I love the next scene with, with, uh, gray with his dad. And I think that what you did really well is that, um, you have them kind of, they're staring at this mold, but first they're just talking about Lisa and it's great. So I would say the mold's already gotten bigger. And so you're looking at, at the mold, Greg and his father, uh, stare at the mold. And I need you to describe the mold. The, the mold, give me a little bit of a visual, a, a deep green and black bumpy cottage cheese thing, you know, just give me a, or a, a hairy, uh, uh, a hairy mat with spikes. You know, I don't know what it looks like. Like give it a, give it a little bit of a, a look or texture. You can always change it, but I, as the reader need to understand what I'm looking at. I want to know. Um, okay, let's see. And then they're, they're talking and I love that they're staring at the mold, but they're talking about Lisa at first. Dad's like, yeah, did you meet Lisa? Um, and Gray's like, I'm not comfortable with you running to people you think are good matches for me. I think that's hilarious. That's such a great line. Um, 
because it tells us so much about like what we think dad, why dad rented. It's just a great line. And dad, and dad would be like, I told you to dress nicely. You know, is that what you wore? You know, is that what you wore today? In fact, that could be the same thing. Dad says, that's what, that's what you were wearing when you met Lisa, you know, and that would be freaking, that would be great. Cause dad's trying to set him up and to meet somebody. Um, and dad, you know, well, you might have a shot. We already know she's a divorcee because you guys said that. Um, and then you would, you could start interspersing a little bit about the mold and, you know, like you had here and then dad's, how long has this been here? And, and Greg's like, well, I saw it this morning or I saw it. Yeah. I saw it earlier this morning. It's gotten bigger since then. Um, and then dad, you know, I told you to take care of it. I like that. I'm having a tough time. Well, we already know he's having a tough time. Um, so if you want to hold off on the existential thing, that might be a good place for it too, where he says, dad, this is existential. You wouldn't, I don't expect you to understand. You know what I mean? <laughs> I don't know. Whatever it is. You came from the fifties. You guys didn't have existential crisis then. <laughs> I don't know. Whatever, you know. Um, Okay, so then you got this. I need you to mix it up. Mix it up. You got to start living, Greg. Okay. I don't know if you need all of this. I would just go through it slowly. Um, okay. Greg Link's kitchen counter looks up to the ceiling, ponders his dad's words. You can keep that like all there. Dad, well, will you scroll up? Will you scroll up on the? Uh... Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Me. Let's it. see. Shifts. Oh, I created using Celtics. <laughs> That's I copied and pasted. Um, I did a copy and paste. Okay, Divarce, you might have had a shot. Dad shifts his focus to the mold. How long has that been there? I don't know. This morning, I think. You know, well, I told you you could stay here as long as you take care of the place. Dad, this is existential. I keep telling you, you're from the 50s. I don't expect you to understand, you know, something like that. You know what you need? A project. Get out and do something. Make it chip, you know, fast. Then he leaves and Greg's. You see how down in here, you've got Greg leans against the kitchen counter, looks up at the ceiling, ponders his dad's words. Mm -hmm. um, all of that can be moved to this moment up in here. Dad leaves and we've got him. And this is page three. I wrote on here, page four. Page four, you have the inciting incident. That's far too, in you should have the inciting incident really by the end of page two. I would give you till the beginning of page three, but by the end of page two. And I think when you cut this, you can get this to, to at least the, the two, you know, you can get this into the bottom of page two, your inciting incident. And this is when it could happen in this scene. Dad leaves and the mold's gotten bigger and he's pondering, he's pondering. He moves up, maybe he even says something like he wouldn't understand existential. And then, and then the thing, right? That's the, and now, so see what happens on, and yeah, you did start it with, did do that? Okay. Uh, Greg's apartment. Uh, he looks up the ceiling through the lens. Okay, imagine Lisa in another reality. So this is really confusing because anytime we look at something or the audience sees something happening, if it's in a different location, you have to give it a new slug line. You have to give it a new scene because that has to be shot. Mm -hmm. So he imagines Lisa in another reality. I have no idea because I can't see into his mind what he's imagining. So if you want us to see Lisa in another reality, you have to show me that scene. I personally wouldn't. We don't need that. And I don't know if you would have time. What is the other? She is shown through a long lens looking towards the camera. I'm not sure what that is. It sounds really cool, but you have to create that. And I'm not sure what that looks like. So I would talk to you about, about that more and figure out so that I could tell you how to phrase it so that it makes sense in here and so that you can shoot it. Because when I read this, I'm reading it from both a writer and a producer perspective. And I'm going, okay, how do I shoot this? And how do I make sure that I can tell this story succinctly and keep it exciting for the audience and, and focused? You and I would talk about like, how do we write this? Because I'm not sure what this is supposed to be. Okay, so now back in the kitchen, inspired by his thoughts of Lisa, Greg approaches the bathroom. So see, when Greg approaches the bathroom, that's a whole new scene, right? Greg in the bathroom. Scene heading, interior, bathroom. 
whatever it is. And he wouldn't approach it because he's already in there. And so we don't need that. But right now, see, it's happening at four on page four. He touches it. Greg notices a little bubble of air. I like that, you know, coming up through the liquid and the mold. He looks at it closer. It sprays the liquid into him, gets all over his face. And then all of a sudden he's in the kitchen. Okay, he's wiping the mold from his face. See what I think you're missing in here. And this is where I'm talking about action reaction is it mm. sprays him in the face. What's his reaction? Give me that moment. Does he, does he like, does he scream? Does he like cover his face? Does he just fall backwards? You know, like, does he just, is it in his cheek? Is it in his eye? Does he like, oh, oh, you know what I mean? I need a reaction moment there. And then we can cut to him in the kitchen where he's wiping it off. But he could also just be in the bathroom wiping it off. Now, this was confusing to me that when the, the you must be thinking of a room already where this is shot, right? Because Lisa mm -hmm. walks by the window. I think yeah. that we need a time shift here because it's like sudden. It, yeah. We haven't had any time for this to really take effect. And I think what you can do is, even in this back here in this bathroom scene, you could have him like, an, he kind of stumbles around and he splashes his face and then maybe he sits down, give him some time. And like, he puts his hands down into his face and he's like, oh, oh, like more, you know, like give him something. So we understand he is going, something starting to change. He is going through something. In fact, you could have such a cool shot. If I were directing it, right. I'd be like, oh man, you have him sit down there. And now you get this low angle thing where he's, he's high and the mold is higher behind him. And that mold is almost pulsing because it's like, yes. You know, the mold's getting what it wants and Greg's here going like he's on psychedelics, you know, like he's experiencing this trip and it's starting to go in. And so now the audience gets to understand, oh, this is doing something to him. This is having this kind of effect, right? Um, oh, so, yeah, that's that's huge. Yeah. Right. So we get to see this process starting to happen. This is arc the beginning of the arc. We've seen his step one. This is stage probably three because that little bit when he barely touched it was maybe a, a step one, a step two, maybe, but this is a true step in his arc. Give me two more steps in his arc, right? And that is, we see that shift in him at that emotional level. Now, what could be interesting is if finally he gets to the sink and there's, we see him, the reflection in the mirror are there and he's kind of wiping that off and maybe he stops and he like starts to look at himself and he's like, he's starting to see himself. That's a huge character shift. And he's like looking at how he's dressed and he wipes his face off. And maybe he's also like, he begins with he's like all you know like he has like stubble or whatever mm -hmm. and we like fade to black and fade up again and next thing you know he's like clean shaven um so that's another shift we he starts to put on a different outfit later on we start to see this how this mold is affecting him and it's starting to build like he's like aware of himself a little bit more right mm -hmm. so um we want to see that. Let me look and see what else is in here. Because now dad shows up. And I don't think he's too changed by the time dad is there. But he's a little bit changed. So Greg walks into the bathroom stairs, molded the okay, camera, right? We get this. You can take out most of these like uh, camera directions. At least camera zooms into the mold and gets lost. I mean, I like that visual. Um, but you would just say, we move closer to the mold and lose ourselves in the darkness. You know what I mean? That's where you could say, and that tells me we're zooming in, we're moving in. And I personally, as the director would go, okay, we don't zoom, we don't zoom in film, but we would, we would dolly forward. Or I would, you know, it's a handheld camera right now. I tell the DP, it's a handheld shot. We're really tight. And I just want you to slowly push in on that mold so that it becomes bigger and bigger and bigger. Right. That's the, so when, if I were directing, I'm talking to the DP about how I want this scene shot. And that's what that is. But I would avoid the camera zooms and instead describe it more visually for us. Uh, Greg's bathroom, Greg's head slows Greg, exit the bathroom, stop in the shadows of the blue room. Oh, now he's in the shadows. I love that. Okay. 
So maybe even, he might even look different. So by this point, he could be in the shadows of his, of his house, which I love. It's just so dark. A couple of ways you could go as far as setting up the suspense for this scene. The audience could know he's there. And that's creepy as F. <laughs> and in the shadows, because you would like, I don't know. I'm not sure, quite sure how I would see that. But maybe there's this, he's like, really, we're on him in this dark. And then we move around as dad comes through. And dad doesn't see him because it's so dark in there. Or you could play it the other way and you're in there and dad comes in and then he surprises us. I'd probably go for the more suspenseful. He's in the shadows lurking, which, and, and the audience knows it. And he doesn't do or say anything when his dad comes in. He just kind of watches him like he's the mold on that wall. Right? Oh, oh yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. Because he's now in there like this and he's watching. And he watches his dad. Ooh, that is just creepy. Right? Yes. Right? Like and so no dad pa passes through. He's like, hey, Greg, where are you? Right? And Greg, Greg just watch. Maybe it's the opposite for his shaven face. And maybe it was just raggedy. And now it's growing in more like the mold. A thought. That's interesting. Different yeah. ways you can, you can think about it. Now, yeah. dad goes into the, into the bathroom. And... Um, Mold spews out and we need to have something big happen with dad. Okay. So let me go back real quick to that moment when the inciting incident, when he gets sprayed. Now we know that the mold wants him to procreate because that's going to help the mold procreate and, and grow. And this mold is going to make him confident and feel, you know, like, Ugh. I own the world, that kind of thing. It's almost like testosterone mold, right? Right, right. And, yeah, definitely. And um, think about that when you're describing his reaction. And so after he's been molded and he's sitting there and he's like, blah, blah, right? And the stuff, this change is happening. He's like turning into a werewolf or something, right? Like that, that it doesn't happen instantly. We see that this stuff happening. And when he gets up to the, the mirror and he's looking at himself, I want you to think about what's going on for him is I want a woman, you know? And that's where he's beginning to think, like, look at himself. And he's like, oh, oh. he could even begin to feel like, oh, I feel, you know, like this. You don't have to say it, but you could imply it in the way you describe his actions and his reactions, okay? Okay. So you could technically, since um, the one thing he could say is after he goes through all this ah, is Lisa, you know, I mean, it could be something like that. Like we know he wants Lisa now, right? Now yeah, we've given yeah. him, he's going to work. He's going to do that. She's going to shut him down once or twice before he gets it. And I don't know how, but it's going to happen because we have to build. We want that momentum of making it not just super easy right? Too easy, too, too easy. Um, okay. So now let me go back and, uh, one, let me make sure that this is helpful and it's, you're understanding it. Yeah. Yeah. This is great. Okay. Through the, be this beginning of his transformation. And remember we have 10 pages, nine, eight, nine, 10 pages that you're playing with. So through the process of his transformation, beginning on page two, the inciting incident, even bottom of two, if you need that much time to build up and enjoy that and really show him, um, you could have, you know, take that time. Then three is this shift in him and where he says, Lisa, and then he's hiding out and his dad shows up and he's like really creepy now. And his dad comes in and let me get here. So, uh, Greg, and that's why I do like the idea of you doing the superimpose of the day three you know, so that it keeps us, we're aware because when it comes to the pregnancy thing, it'll be good. It'll be useful for that because then it'll be, the audience will be going, oh, sheesh, it's only day five and she's pre like, this is crazy mold, <laughs> you know? So in that way, it could be really useful. What, what could be a kind of cool shot is well, as, as this is winding down in um, 
as, as he's going through this transformation in the bathroom and he's in the mirror and he's like, oh, ah, oh, yeah, whatever. The doorbell rings. And, you know, I love, I always love that shot of um, like the person looking through the, 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 the hole. And I don't know if it's possible to get that, but the, you know, so like Lisa, he's looking through the door hole and there's Lisa and he just smiles and we get that reverse shot on him. And he's like, Lisa, you know, I like, that could be really fun. Um, and she's like, Hey, uh, I, I, I left my whatever. I don't know. I don't know why she'd come. Let's see. Greg enters the kitchen, wipes the mold from his face. Okay. And then Lisa, Greg, you're hilarious. I'm not sexually attracted to you. I was a little bit confused um, by this. Like, why is she saying that to him? Oh, uh, like right up above. It's like, it's like she was like walking by the window essentially and stopped looking away. And he's kind of like checking her out. Mm -hmm. as he's being like inspired you know by the mold so he's a little bit more he's checking her out right. and then she kind of turns around and sees him and it's just kind of like were you checking me out and he's like yep yeah, i was you know and this mm -hmm. she says she's actually attracted to him um okay okay so have to think like if he's doing so maybe not right now maybe she doesn't come to his house right now maybe he goes to her because that shows he's become more he's he's upping it a little bit but i like that he says lisa in the bathroom then later he's i don't think we need that scene with her right now i think that the next scene is him in the shadows and dad comes over and he's like greg i'm here for the i'm here to take care of the mold where are you greg doesn't say anything he's just off oh, whatever Right? No, I'm Jesus, whatever, you know, whatever you want to do with that. And then dad goes in, here's the kitchen. And then dad, I do like this. What are you doing, weirdo? That's hilarious. And I do like that all of that. And maybe, so maybe dad does see him somehow. Then dad goes in. So maybe he does step out of the shadows and then like dad's startled and going, oh, what are you doing, weirdo? I I, I think that's funny. That's That's good stuff in there. So he could totally do that. And here, dad enters the bathroom. It would be a new slug line because you're in a new location, right? Okay. Now we're in the bathroom. And dad climbs up and he's looking at it. He's doing his whole thing with it. This is crazy. When did you say this started? This morning. <laughs> you know, whatever. This It's mine is a little interesting. I'm not sure, but maybe, maybe. I'd have to, I'm like, you can leave that there for now. Dad turns to the mold. Then the mold spews this in dad projectiles changes color dad panics he he can't avoid the spray it's fat and thick covers his face i liked all this he's choking and struggling you're giving dad this whole moment right that you didn't give greg earlier right he steps down to the shower and slides down the wall of the tub then reaches out for his son i love all that dad struggles lays in the bathtub presumably dead and then it's it's greg stares whatever it is emotionless curious you know i don't know what uh, what what reaction greg has right now but we need to see that on him because that is how we gauge where he's at in his shift we get in the script where am i at this is page seven right here okay so yeah we need to have that 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 re response that reaction that moment with greg to understand what's going on with him because at this point <sighs> And I'm a little bit conflicted because if Greg is now doesn't care about what happens to his dad, he's gone past like just dealing with confidence issues, but he's becoming less and less human, really. That's what it feels like to me. It's either that or is a sociopath. And so I think that you just have to know which direction he's going. And it's not just about confidence, but him becoming less and less of a human. That that totally makes sense. Yeah. Um, and may because he could have in that moment is like how much mold is he? How much he's like 80% mold inside now? Yeah, you know, I don't know. Or is he gonna say, <laughs> I'm sorry, Dad? Or you know, is it something like give us that something with that? I need to understand where he's at and how he's shifting so that by the end I can totally clock it. So we're starting, he okay. lacks confidence. But since we've introduced this behavior, 
what, how would you, how would you describe him as going from like having some level of compassion to no compassion or like this, a yeah. little human to it's, it's, less? I would, I would definitely have him being like strong here. Like he's not helping his father, but he's standing there as like a, a presence of strength and, and stability. Um, yeah, but he's, he's the letting his, man. but he's letting his dad die. And that, what does that tell me about him as a person? Yeah, that's, that's, what's tough. Um, the, like you're saying, like the line or something, you know, the, I'm sorry, dad, the, the some element of some kind of humanity here, um, might help so uh, it, it's either that because you want him to be completely void of humanity by the end because he's letting like he's doing terrible things so he, like he i could. i see i see him as human the whole time um i just see him representing some of the things like you, you know the the worst sides of <laughs> of that so, humanity i guess uh -huh, um, uh -huh, so uh -huh. like so like still not like like that's what's weird i always pictured greg in the end like just looking like a million bucks if i could get somebody to go from like fat to buff i would you know but just like really actually just kind of awesome like in the worst way ever just like in that sense um so it's a weird thing. It's like that, 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 oh, this guy is really like turn the corner in a positive way, but not really. That's where it gets, it's, it's, it's tough. It's such a fine line. Um, okay. So I think, I'm wondering if there's a way that we can deal with that by doing something like this. Cause there's that too, right before the mold attacks him, like he's telling his dad that it's his. You know, he's saying it's mine, but then right before the mold sprays him, he like kind of is like not trying to save his dad, but it's like that little bit of him, you know, where he's like, dad, daddy, you know, like that right before the thing gets him. So he, he most certainly it's like that, at least that, that bit of him, that compassion inside of him is, is in him somewhere. Um, And so maybe this line gives us, so you don't have to keep what I just wrote, but I mean, maybe there's in this moment, because this could be very, very interesting on an emotional level and for the actor, and it gives the audience something more to cling to, to understand, okay, so there's this really interesting um, shift going on, right? And I think we need to give it a line, like, uh, and, and you need to figure out what that is. Like, this is... It's okay, dad. Um, you know, death is like, this is part of the cycle. This is just, this is part of, we are born and then we die. It's okay, dad. I don't know. It's something there. I, I, I think it's something related uh, to, to theme. And I'm not quite sure what thematically we're dealing with. So I think that that would be all, you know, all the conversations should should touch on theme in some way. And right now, you know, you're dealing with people who take care of themselves and do things, but I think that you need to consider what that bigger theme is. And it might be, um, what could we, you know, roll all of these ideas into, and it could be how we treat one another, that okay. compassion. It's also think about how the mold relates to this story and the mold. I would say the mold doesn't have a feeling or an opinion. It just, needs to survive and spread its seed like so much else in 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 the world right so i mean i i think that you might be playing with that theme is that nature is not pretty nature is nature and it will take what it wants and that might be the theme that you're really playing with and so you could find you know how to how to say something that that points in that direction does that make sense yeah.
Yeah, that does. And that's kind of like, like the nature. I think I always thought of the theme kind of as like, uh, everybody has an idea of what they want, but like what you want might not, might not necessarily um, be what you want. Um, if you go with like, this is nature and it's, you know, nature takes what it wants kind of thing, which I think is, is very interesting because in every time I turn around, that's what I'm seeing. Mm -hmm. You need to set up the theme earlier on as well and make a statement in the beginning. Like I would go back up here to the beginning and somewhere in here, yeah, you got divorced. Yeah. I know. I thought I heard you like you, you wanted a baby. That's natural. I mean, you know, our bodies are designed like nature, nature tells women they want babies. I don't know. It's something like that. One little throwaway line early on so that we get the theme in there. If you're paying attention, you're going to know it. It could also, again, you could send it in one more time when Greg and dad are looking at the, at the mold in there. And Greg's like, well, I mean, it's kind of, it's just natural. I mean, mold happens, right? You know, so you could plant two little times in there, this idea of nature being part of the theme. And I would do that in there to cement it. And then you've got this final line where he's telling his dad, because a lot of, you know, animals and everything else in nature, they, you know, they might feel compassion, but it's also nature, it's survival. So I want to know, I want this, I want something in here from Greg during this time. And I personally like the idea that he has some kind of compassion for his dad, because it tells us one, he's not a psychopath. Yeah. And then he, he, he uh, bookends that with, you know, he puts that, that he, he puts the hammer down with, it's nature, dad, you know, whatever it is. It's like, ah, fuck, he's an animal. <laughs> That's what he's becoming. He's just becoming this mold. So I think you could get away with that there. So long lens, make something of yourself. I'm not sure that you need any of that because that's not really the theme and that's not, that doesn't matter. Make something of yourself. I think this is where Greg really begins to take steps to get Lisa, right? And he goes to her apartment and he's different. And I think that you're going to have this scene with him and Lisa where he's pursuing her and she's like, you've changed. And it doesn't have to be this big shift. Wait till the next scene to show him even change more, you know? Mm -hmm. But cause maybe he just put on a clean t-shirt and combed his hair you know i don't know it's something it's that it's that it's that shift but he's now in her room he's going to her door which is huge what are you doing here mold spews out being colored okay dad so sorry whatever dream sequence lisa on a long lens blown out in another reality lisa eats mold that's interesting <laughs> that's a and that was you Early, you know, early on when it said they saw her, like he he has this vision of her in another reality, mm -hmm. essentially it's the same as that, what that would have been. But in right. the beginning, you just get this little glimpse of it. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know if, if you need it. It, it can be interesting. I mean, I don't want to say no, because you could try it and see how it works, right? It was almost like a transition. Like yeah. if it, you know, as the way it kind of was from like dad dying to him going out to see, you know, Lisa. Um, yeah. And in fact, the reason he could go see Lisa after that scene with his dad is my dad just died. Oh, he's looking for a little compassion maybe from her. And, and that could bring and them a little super, bit closer together. That's super creepy too, for him to be talking to her about my dad just died, but he doesn't Right. Include that he doesn't call the police. He doesn't do anything. <laughs> the guy's creepy, right? That's why I'm saying this might not be PCS. I'm not sure, <laughs> but I like it. <laughs> I really like it. So for that to be a dream sequence, you would say, um, you know, interior room, wherever it's happening day, and then explain, because it has to be shot somewhere. You know, it, it, is it his bedroom? Is it the kitchen? It, it doesn't really matter. Ultimately, you guys will have a decision, make a decision when you go to shoot it, but you have to locate it somewhere. And Lisa, um, blown out. I'm not, cause again, I'm not sure what another reality means. So you'd have to describe what that is. And Lisa just eating mold would be weird. And I would imagine it's in his bathroom, but anyway, um, so maybe he goes to her, and this is where he begins to make some moves on her because he needs to start going for what he wants, right? 
And I think that you don't have to worry about like all this. She comes home from a date. She's walking, unless you want to do it in the courtyard, which I love the courtyard. He could be again, creeping in the shadows, waiting for her. And when she comes, when she starts walking through, he steps out. And this time he's looking better. You know, he's looking very handsome, as you say. So you could do that, but he has to really start making those moves. And that's where he could say, my dad died tonight. And she's like, oh my God. And then he switches the subject. Like, yeah, so- you had a date and she's like geez oh wait because uh, you look beautiful how did it go and she's like what is going and whatever there must be some pheromones or something going on with him that he's able to do this right and so this courtship could begin in there you know he starts pursuing her because that's what has to happen he's going after her we don't know yet exactly that it's for procreation but we should have gotten that because on page one or a little bit on two you mentioned children so you dropped that hint once you also dropped the hint about nature and you've dropped the hint two or three times we and you're subtle about it so you never want to bang your audience over the head because you want us to be putting the pieces together so that by this point when he starts going after her we should really be getting that this is about, he wants to, he wants to bone, right? He wants to procreate. And so that's what I want to see, you know, happen here. And then the whole weird shit with her and having the baby day, day four. Um, and he grows even more into what he is because by the time he goes out to, to, to find another woman, he's more of what he was. He's more, oh, nice. you know what I mean? He's, he's the ultimate now. And that is like, you could take a scrawny guy and build him up by like putting him in different clothes and, and like setting it up so that he becomes like this more muscled guy, right? You could create that with probably some clothes. And if you bought a little bit of padding or maybe a muscle shirt, you know, you could do that with a thinner guy, harder to do with a fatter guy because he can't lose the weight so fast but if you cast somebody who's a little bit thinner and um or even a thin guy and you could frump him up with like a belly and yeah. and you could change all that and so that by the time so he's really in good shape but you know you've padded him and frumped him up and done like you know some things to really do that you could show his his change and so as this is going on it's like oh you know and guess what women are part of nature and we can't help react also to that because that's nature. So I think you need to pursue that, that theme. So then when he goes out to find this other woman, um, is he just going to keep all these women in the house? And like, what's, what's his plan there? It's that is very much like, there is no plan like that okay. is just like okay. complete, that's just complete chaos at the end yeah like, and that's okay that's yeah, okay like, i kind of like that idea because it is it's like mold just going crazy it's nature going crazy nature is not worried about keeping things in order so i'm okay with that he pursues her during that courting scene and that courting scene's a page and a half probably that's the bulk of this that's where that's where he pursues her. She dodges because he's weird and, and she's like getting uncomfortable and he pursues her from another angle. It could be physically, but it's also mentally, right? Um, it's, uh, my dad died tonight. And she's like, oh my God, do I, did you call? Did you, I um, I'm so sorry, did you call the police? And he's thinking, that's not the reaction I want. He's like, did you go on a date tonight? You look beautiful. New approach, new tactic. You see what I'm saying? He's, I like that strikes out. Right, exactly. Then throws his dad out as the thing. Then that gets weird and he like backtracks it and just uh -huh. starts. And another like approach, right? Until he pulls her in. And finally she's like, oh, you, he steps into the light. He's more in the light. He's like, yeah, I just, I realized I needed to, you know, I, sh I don't know what he's going to say. Something simple, but not on the nose. And it's more about the looks and the actions. And finally he's close enough to her and she's like seeing this. And he's like, so do you want to, you want to come up for a drink or something? And she's like, yeah, you know, she doesn't have to say, yeah, they're just the next shot is he's like, Hey, I have an idea. 
and next shot they're in the they're in the his room you know what i mean nice. and and she's like into him and i don't know what you know this other stuff happens he's going to get what he wants but i would do some inner cutting between the baby and and lisa's lisa's growth and stuff and him like in that doorway again and like he is now at his fullest and he goes out and we don't have to show him with like trying to get the other girl we just farm with doors wide open he invites her in yeah we just get this little bit and you have a really good like you have a good eye for not having not telling too much of the story i like that you get into it a little late like that's what you need to do get in late and get out early like we don't need a whole lot of information so i i like that I'm not the mine. The mine could work. I'd like to see mine. I'd, I'd see it again on your next draft. And then let's see if mine works or if we need a different word for that. Mm. You know what I mean? I'm not or sure. Could even, I, yeah. Not. It could just be a, a look. Yeah. Or and a, I like the looks. Essentially just, you know, just, yeah. 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 And then, you know, and this is chaos in there and he just smiles and like, whatever. Um, I think you could have a lot of fun with that. I think that when dad goes to touch the mold and to squirt the mold, I think he makes a move like to stop him. Okay. He, he has to, he like makes a move, dad, no, but the mold mm -hmm. does it. The mold, you know, that oh, does like it. Thing. To, the mold defends to itself, but I want to see him take a step to do something because we want more pushback. What? You could have like dad. I think maybe at one iteration, um, dad was actually like, his intent was to remove the mold. Yeah. 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 And it, it, like, like he was, he was there to like get this done. Yeah. Um, I think that's what, so what dad's like there to things. do. I think dad's got a bottle of bleach in one hand and a, um, a scraper in the other, and he's going to spray bottle with bleach on it. You know, the word bleach and he's got the scraper and he goes to spray and, 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 and Greg's like, no. And the mold just goes, you know, the mold like wakes up and, you know, something like that. So, yeah. Okay. And then it just affects, it affects Greg, I guess, differently. Right. It's like, it does something to him. Uh, it kills dad, but well, it does something different to him. I think the mold would have inhabited dad too, but I think dad falls and hits his head on the thing and bleeds out. Oh. Because okay. the mold has one way and it, it will poison it poisons you with his, with its, it, it spreads itself. So that's kind of how I interpreted that. Um, but you could do it anyway. You know, you could do the mold is, is a sprain, a different kind of, you'd have to make it look different. Well, that's you know? the, 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 you said the slip and fall thing. Like I, I've had, I've had um, other friends that have looked at this script. I've had them, I've heard the, why does it kill dad? And it like turns Greg into something else. And I've always been like, well, I don't know. <laughs> That's a clean, like the idea that dad would. And then, yeah, slip and fall. That's, that's huge. Uh, yeah. Get, get it into Yumi's script and uh, get the formatting right. And then play with this and start cutting down on as much dialogue and direction as possible. Really build up that, that shift from when he gets sprayed and let's see that, that, this growing change in Greg and start planting the nature uh, aspect of this so that it can build up to that. And I love how you have humor in here and I don't want to eliminate all your humor. You know, I really, I do like that you have that in there. I will look forward to reading again, what you come up with. I'll turn this around really quick. Um, okay. I'm excited about these notes and I'm, I'm yeah, I, I, I'll turn it around quick for you. Just keep thinking every time asking yourself, you know, why is this happening? Is this moving it forward? Is this a, a real reaction moment? Do, am I building this arc? Am I getting this growth in there? And you want to write that out. That's more important than anything, but commit to some of these decisions and let me see it. And, and I really want to be like, holy shit. Yes, yes, yes. I want the stuff to flow. Right. 